Good morning. Are you able to hear? Now I know you can hear me. What a beautiful Sabbath it is. It is good to come together to worship in the Lord's house. We want to welcome each one who is joining us here in person and those who are joining us online, those who will view later. It is so good to come together to be with the Lord and to fellowship with his people. Uh, just by way of a quick announcement, um, this is in the bulletin, but I want to remind those of you who have people of Pathfinder age to, that uh, as fall rolls around, uh, Pathfinders will be starting up again. Uh, stay tuned for more information. There will be more information next week. There's also a, a QR code uh, page in the bulletin that you can scan in for more information. I want to begin our service with some scripture, usually some scripture of joy, some scripture of praise. This comes from uh, Psalms 105 and then a couple verses from Psalm 107. It says, O give thanks unto the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the people. Sing unto him, sing psalms unto him, talk ye of his wondrous work. Glory ye in his holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face evermore. Remember his marvelous works that he hath done, his wonders, his judgments of his mouth. O ye seed of Abraham, his servant, ye children of Jacob, his chosen. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He hath remembered his covenant forever the word which he commanded to a thousand generations. And then in Psalms 107, Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men, and let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare his works with rejoicing. Let's have a word of prayer as we begin our service this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this Sabbath day. We thank you for your great love for us and how you've led us. We pray for your Holy Spirit now as we begin our church service. We ask you would fill our hearts, and may we lift our hearts in praise and thanksgiving to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, I invite you to sing along with us. We sing majesty. Majestic is your name in all the earth. 
Will you please stand with us for our opening song, I Sing... with his word and then pronounce them good. Lord, how thy wonders are displayed where'er I turn my eye. If I survey the ground I tread or gaze upon the sky. There's not a plant nor flower below but makes thy glory that borrow life from thee are subject to thy care. There's not a place where we can flee, but God is present there. You may be seated. It's our prayer time now, and we're going to sing our prayer chorus now, dear Lord, as we pray and as we do that, Oren is going to come up and lead us in prayer. reverently approach our Lord in prayer, and so far as possible, let us kneel. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you again for this Sabbath day. We thank you for your love and for your many mercies, for your constant watch care for us. Lord, we know that we are dependent upon you for our very lives and the continuation of our lives and for our sustenance. We thank you for these things. We thank you for your angels who are continually with us to guide us and to bless us. Father, we thank you for a heavenly home that you have prepared for us. We ask that you would continue to guide us and lead us toward that heavenly home. We thank you for the opportunity and the privilege we have of coming together to worship in your house today. Lord, we know that with the many blessings you have given us that there are still trials that we each go through. Lord, there are some who have trials of needing a job, trials in relationships, trials and tragedies that happen to us. Lord, we ask that you would be with each one of us, that you would comfort us according to your will. Lord, we especially lift up Pablo and his family, that you would guide them, give them your comfort, and give them your strength and your continued leading 
as you have opened up doors, continue to open them and give them your comfort and your blessing. Father, we remember the missions of this church. We ask that you would guide in these, that people may be touched, may be drawn to you. Remember the pathfinders as they get ready to start up again for the fall. We would ask your blessing upon them. We remember our school and our teachers and our students. Please continue to bless and keep each one of these in your love. We remember our country and our leadership. Lord, we pray for the presence of your Holy Spirit in our earth that you would hold back the winds of strife. Remember the situation in Europe also, that your will may be done there. Father, we ask that you would forgive us of our sins. Open our hearts now as we listen to your word, as we are in your presence. Be with each one who leads out and participates in our church service, that our minds may be drawn to our heavenly home. In Jesus' name, amen. this moment people everywhere join us now as we come to you in prayer at this time we think about our worship and giving it's nice we come to church it's nice that we receive of the blessings of God, but there's also worship in giving. There are a number of reasons why we should give, why we should return back to the Lord. We certainly remember Malachi, where he says, bring you the tithes in my storehouse, and I will give you a blessing such that you will not be able to receive it. We also remember that the Lord has told us in Deuteronomy chapter 8 that we need to remember who it is that gives us our wealth, and that when we get our wealth, our money, that we do not forget who it is that gives us our wealth. But there are other lessons involved, other things to consider that I hope come into our mind when we give to the Lord. One, of course, as mentioned, you know, where our wealth comes from, we need to remember our, our daily sustenance. We need to remember the great gift that heaven has bestowed upon us in sending Jesus to be with us, to live among us, and to die for us. And remember the great gift that is still to come of salvation in heaven, which begins as we are here on this earth. As we are in God's presence, as we remember to love and to honor him, we also remember those who would benefit from our offerings, remember our church, the work that our church does, remember our school, remember those in our community who benefit from our outreach in the community. Today's offering is for our local church budget. Um, we are still doing the offering plate at the front of the church and at the rear, so remember our offerings as we file out today. Let us have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for how richly you have blessed us and you continue to bless us. Help us to remember your blessings as we share your love with others around us. Help us to remember the great gift that heaven has given us and Jesus coming to die for us so that you can have a home in heaven that we may join you there one day. Thank you, dear Father, in Jesus' name, amen. We have something else special happening here shortly.
Am I on? Yes. Good morning, boys and girls. I know I see you. I don't hear you. Good morning, boys and girls. All right. I have a, a little story for you today. I want, I'm going to start off with a couple of Bible verses that I want to share with you. Before I do that, um, do you know what it means to trust in something or to s trust in someone? What does it mean to trust in someone? Trustworthy. Okay, you can be trustworthy. Yeah, but to trust something, you got to, what? Those are not going to lie. That's very good. That's very true. Um, there's a lot of things that we can put our trust in. Can you think of anything that we might, as children or as Adults, what are some of the things that we trust in? What can we trust in? We can trust God. That's the best thing we can trust in. But sometimes we don't always do what we're supposed to do. What are some other things that we can trust in? Our parents. That's a good one, too. Ourselves. That's right. Some people can trust in yourselves. Our friends. Very good. What about, what about your job or your money? Do people ever do that? Do it, have people ever trust in, in what they can get in their money and things? Yeah, they do that. What about, oh, I've gone to school, and I've graduated college, and I am really smart. Do people ever trust in their wisdom and how smart they are? Yes, but we already had the, the best answer on who we're supposed to trust, and that's God. Um, in, in Mark chapter 10, verse 24, it says, it's actually talking to children. This is Jesus talking. Jesus answered again and said to them, children, how hard is it for those who trust in riches to enter the kingdom of God? It's hard when you have a lot of money to trust in God. If you didn't have a lot of money and you were hungry and you didn't have any money to buy food, You'd be trusting in God, wouldn't you? But if you had lots of money, I don't need to pray. I've got all this food in the refrigerator and the cabinets. I don't need to trust God. I, I've got it all because I've got money. And that's not what we're supposed to do. Um, I've got another verse for you I want to share. It's in, oops, wrong one. <laughs> it's in Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 21. It says, woe to those who are wise in their own eyes. That's what I was talking about, about having all this smart stuff. We got all this education and we know it all. And we don't have to, we can figure it out ourselves. We don't need God, but that's not, that's not what we're supposed to do. In Proverbs there's a lot to be said. It said in verses 4 and 5, well, let me, let me touch on verse 7 first. It says, do not be wise in your own eyes. That means don't think you're really smart. But fear the Lord and depart from evil. And then the verses right above that in verses 5 and 6, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not unto your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him. Who's him? God, exactly. Acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. What's that mean? He's going to direct our paths. What's that mean? That's kind of strange. I'm going to give you a little bit of an example. Now, I've asked, I've asked somebody to help me to demonstrate what it means. And I'm going to talk to you as I as I'd had this demonstration. Russell, can you come on come on over here for me? When we trust in God, we're going to hold on to his hand and we're going to look at him and God is going to take you all over the place. We don't know where he's going to go, but you look at God and he's not going to run you into anything. You've just got to believe and trust him. See, I didn't run him into a, to something. Now, God, I can, I can uh, 
direct him around. I can direct Russell around so he doesn't step on you or something like that. But sometimes people, they just, they're not as, as trustworthy as God. Thank you, Russell. And so as we are living our lives, we need to imagine that God, we can't actually see his hand, can we? But we've got to imagine that we're holding on to God and we're walking through the life, through our lives. And we don't know where we're going sometimes, do we? It's like, I don't know what, what I'm supposed to do. I don't know where I'm supposed to go. But we have to have trust that God is not going to run us into a wall or into a chair or have us trample on somebody. He's going to be there and he's going to guide us. And then I want to give you one more verse. It's in Malachi. No, 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 I want to do one other. In Psalms 23, it's a very familiar, very familiar passage. In verses 2 and 3, Well, let's start at verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. And here it is. He leads me beside the still water. There he is. He's leading me. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness. Now, righteousness is doing good things. We need to do what's right in God's sight. So he's going to lead us. If we trust him, we don't know where we're going. We need to trust God, and he's going to lead us. And then the very last verse, I want you to, that's a promise in Psalm 23 that he's going to lead us. And in, Psalm, and in Malachi 3, verse 6, this is something that you can rest on. It says, for I am the Lord, I do not change. Now, that little example that I gave to you with, with Russell, that was actually a story. It's a real-life story that I heard about where a man had adopted a little girl, and they were walking through the store. And the whole time that they were walking through that store, she never once looked at where she was going. She just held on to her daddy's hand and was looking up at her, at his, at her daddy and just lovingly looking at him and just knew that he wasn't going to take her some place where it was going to hurt her. And so we need to remember that, boys and girls, that when we trust if we have godly parents, we can trust our parents, like was said, but we can also trust God. And sometimes parents make mistakes. Did you know that? But God will never make mistakes. And the Bible says, I am the Lord, I, got, I, do, not ch I do not change. He's not going to change. He's always going to lead us and guide us and love us. And we need to remember that. So I want you to remember that little story and Look to God and trust God that when you grow up, you guys have just barely started living your lives. But when you get up and you're getting a little older, you need to believe that God is going to be there for you. And he's not going to hurt you. He's not going to take you someplace where you're going to be destroyed or something. There's a purpose for it. He, he loves you and he wants to do what's best for you. Let's have a word of prayer, boys and girls. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time and these boys and girls. We pray, Father, that they'll learn how to lean on you and to hold on to your unchanging hand and that they'll learn to obey their parents, their teachers, their preachers, and that they'll learn, more importantly, how to trust and obey you, Father. We love you, and we just want to give ourselves, our lives to you. And I just pray for all that are under the sound of my voice that they will apply this in their lives. We thank you, Lord, and we love you. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, boys and girls, you can go back to your seat.
choir. Others walk around in pairs. Somebody's in the street now. Somebody's in doubt. Somebody has no place to go. Somebody cries out, saying,
praying, Abba. Our scripture reading this morning comes from Psalms 93. Psalm chapter 93. It says, The Lord reigneth, he is clothed with majesty. The Lord is clothed with strength, wherewith he hath girded himself. The world also is established that it cannot be moved. Thy throne is established of old, thou art from everlasting. The floods have lifted up, O Lord, the floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lift up their waves. The Lord on high is mightier than the noise of many waters, yea, than the mighty waves of the sea. Thy testimonies are very sure. Holiness becometh thine house, O Lord, forever. May the Lord bless us as we continue to listen to his word. church. It's good to be back. When uh, you are away for a couple of weeks, you come back, you see there are changes and things are different. And uh, I can tell you that Thursday, a couple of days ago, I was pretty down in many ways, looking at all the things that are going on, all the things that have to happen. And sometimes you worry, what's happening in church? Where are we heading? Are we going to be okay this winter? And yet, the calmness is, God is in control. He still reigns. Is amen to that? And so I know that we will be involved, we'll be active. I'd love to see more children at SPJA. And by the way, some of you may not realize that while vouchers start after you've been in public school for one year, we have ways around that. So if you're looking at putting your child at SPJ but think you need to be one year in a public school, talk to us. And sometimes I want to worry about finances and budgets and how are you going to do with that and how many are going to be involved, how many are going to be helping out. I know God is calling each one of us, and I'm at peace that we're going to be good as the uh, year moves on. This afternoon after service, I believe there's a meal. The bulletin said it was at the school gym, but it's here in the all-purpose room, okay? So those are joining their all-purpose room. Now, tomorrow morning, we have something going on. What's happening? Work bee. Everybody's going to be there. I see your hands. How, how many are going to be there? I need more hands. I'm, I'm going to wait with sharing my story until I have more hands. <laughs> I want more hands there. You, you can come for an hour. Yeah, someone raising two hands. 
we really need good help. The deacons organize this, but the, the deacons are not intended to be doing all the work. And so I really need a lot of people to come. There are so many things that can be done, and I know that some have been working even before work be, and so you may have noticed on the front of the, uh, of the building, things have changed there. We need to come together and make sure that things happen. So much appreciated. Um, life is not always easy. It doesn't always go as you plan, right? I went for a hike in Iceland with a couple of my friends, actually a few of my friends, and uh, two of them are from this church, and they're now my Viking brothers. They learned to experience Iceland and a uh, saying that we call thetarettast. Can you say that? Some are able to say it, yeah. <laughs> Let me hear the church said, thetarettast. Yeah, it's hard to roll the uh, tongue a little bit. Iceland has survived through a pretty rugged environment because they have an attitude, we find a way. We know what's going to work out. God is still there. And so we discovered that. So I have some pictures. Let's see if the uh, slides work. Um, one of the things that was incredible is that just days before we got to Iceland, this volcano began. And if you notice, it's kind of a big puddle. Let's, let's take the next one, yeah. See, just like a big puddle, like a lake. And it's just like multiple crates, craters coming through that. And as you go through some more slides, um, it's... The temperature of this is about 1,200 degrees centigrade. And this is liquid rock. The rock is so hot, it's liquid. Some people think that if you fall into this, you just drop in, you disappear, and you die instantly. That's not true. It's very dense. And so if you walk on the, la on the black lava, you think it's safe, and you fall through, what happens is you have incredible pain your body lights on fire and you burn. You don't just drop in like water because it's very dense. And you see how close we are. This is some of our, our uh, Viking brothers. They, they just walk right up to the lava. In fact, Joey, later on the week, he took a knife and he scraped out and cut out a little piece of rock and took with him home. Next one. That's a tiny, tiny piece from this one. Let's go to the next one. That's how close we are. We're very close to that, and this is really, really hot. Let's move on. And uh, you can see how it is boiling. This is liquid rock just boiling, bubbling out. The volcanoes in Iceland are relatively safe because the plates are moving away from each other. They open up the plates, and the lava just comes up. In other parts of the world, the plates are pushing on each other. So when the volcano erupts, it explodes up. But in Iceland, it's usually not that way. Let's go to the next one and move on. But we were not going to Iceland to just watch a volcano. That was a bonus. We went to go on a hike. Let's move on. We went to a place called Landmannalaugar, right there. It's a very volcanic activity. You can see how the different... Uh, colors in the rock there, black lava, and then the multicolor mountains. Let's move on. And uh, this is a place where there's some hot springs. If you look caref carefully, you'll recognize one of our church members there. Let's move on. Uh, right in the background, below the black lava, you see some people there? You see that? It's hard, hard to see, maybe. I see it better on the TV than you can there, but that's okay. That's a hot spring, and we go in there, and that's where we spend maybe an hour or two just bathing in the hot water. It's hot. You have to move around because the hot and the cold water come together in the, in the creek there. And if the hot water gets stronger, you kind of burn, so you move away a little bit, and then you get closer to the cold. But it's a great place to go. We went there a couple of times just to go in there and just soak in the, the hot spring. Let's move on. But the weather was not the best. We expected to have, or I expected August will be fairly decent. And you see the clouds are there. Our tents were on gravel, so they're very comfortable to sleep on. Let's get the next one. 
um, the creeks, let's move on. And uh, the lava colors, the water, the hot springs, let's move on. And yet at the same time, we also had the rainbow. And to me, that was very encouraging. We said, yeah, God is here. Let's move on. And we started hiking, went into a canyon called Grainagil, or Green Canyon. And uh, then we, we hiked around also other places. Move on. Rock formations, move on. And you see some hot springs up there to um, your um, left. Let's move on. And some more hot springs, move on. That's hot. That's clay bubbling. And this was all over the place. You recognize those guys there? <laughs> Randy is here. Lonnie is there also. Joey, Pastor Joey, some remember him. And uh, it was good to rest, but it's a hot area. Let's move on. Let's move on. Let's just go through a few here. Yeah, let's stop there. I didn't take more pictures because as we went up in the mountain, we were carrying about 50 pounds on our back. We had food for about eight days. We had supplies. We had a tent, a sleeping bag, had clothes. Uh, we had security gear, um, other things. So we're hiking with about 50 pounds on our back, and uh, we planned on five-hour hike. The weather changed as we were hiking. For a while, we could see big areas, mountains in the distance, but then as we continued, it started getting pretty windy and rain. We came to our destination, can you say that? And uh, when we got there, they said, we don't, ex we don't recommend you stay here. We were planning to pitch our tents there. Our tents were already wet from where we took off. But they said, you should not pitch a tent here. Go to Altavat, because that's mostly downhill you climbed up now, now you start going downhill, and it's a good place to be and should be better to camp, and we recommend you not stay here up on the high mountain. So we didn't have much choice. The cabin was full. We had to either tent in the storm or head down, so we headed down, continuing, and we thought another five hours, maybe four hours going downhill, except what we thought was flat was up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down, and it kept on forever. Then when that ended, we looked up and said, whoa, another mountain. And the mountain trails are not secure. You are kind of walking on a trail that is tilted like this, so your ankles are kind of twisted with your pounds on your back, and the wind is howling, and we had to make sure we were staying in there, and it was raining. And it kept on and on and on, and we made it to our destination after 12 hours hiking on the trail with our backpack. When we got to Altavat, the winds were up there howling, rain was pounding, we were exhausted, it was after dark, and everything was closed except we had a place to pitch our tent. So we started, and the tents are just flapping, and I wasn't sure if we'd get them up, but finally we got them up, and our friends had been there just an hour or two ahead of us, and they secured a bowl of soup for us. So we got in, got a bowl of soup, went right back into the tents, and the wind really picked up. I thought our tent would be blown away. And uh, Lonnie... He was in his tent, Joe in his tent, Bjarne in his tent, I was in my tent, and I just hoped and prayed that my tent would not blow away. Lonnie, we didn't know until next morning, the cover on his tent blew off two or three times. And he got a little bit of rain inside his tent. He got out. The problem was he didn't have stakes. Somehow they got left behind or lost somewhere and did not have a lot of stakes, and none of us knew what was going on. I'm not sure we'll be ready to go out and help Lonnie. <laughs> Lonnie is not here, so I can say that. But we survived the night. And I can tell you that night and in the morning, I know that the others did the same thing. I prayed, God, please 
stop the storm, stop the storm. I know on the lake years ago with the disciples, you stopped the storm. I know you can do it now. Please stop the storm. And the others are doing the same thing. And the storm kept on for hours and hours and hours. Finally, we got a little bit of sleep. The next morning, we're still there. But you still question, God, why? Why not? And we start thinking about what should we do? Do we continue another two days? We had planned to go on another four days, five days. What do we do? And we were in the interiors of the mountains where there are no buses, no scheduled travel. You can't get there except on a super truck. We didn't have one of those. And we question, what do we do? And yet I can say that I am absolutely confident that the text that we read this morning in Psalms 93 is true. Turn with me to Psalms 93. This is a short psalm. It is bold. It declares that God is mighty and that he is holy. And it begins just right off. The Lord reigns. It's not a question. It's not a doubt. It's a statement, a declaration. My God reigns. And even if I'm walking a long distance, I'm exhausted. And I'm just tired. And I get to a place where it's raining and I have to pitch a tent and I pray, God, please stop the rain, stop the storm, and it doesn't happen. I know my God still reigns. That he is mighty, that he is holy, that he is in control, and he has been in control from eternity to eternity, no matter what happens in my life. Anyone say amen to that? Are you sure that is true? You're not sure, huh? Those who really believe the Lord reigns. Let me hear amen. amen. The Lord is robed in majesty. And his arm with strength. You know, majesty is dignity. God is reigning with authority. He has power. His grandeur. He is an incredible an incredible God who reigns with power and authority. He is holy and mighty. It's interesting, it says there in verse 2 that his throne was established a long time ago, and he is from eternity. Isn't that different from kings on earth? Presidents on earth, they come and go, they fight, they battle each other, try to take over and try to win, either through political trickery, through political power, or even with weapons. But God doesn't do that. He has reigned from eternity past and will reign to eternity future. He's still there. It's the one constant in life, no matter what is going on, no matter where we are, he is mightier than thunders, mightier than storms. And I find it interesting. At the end of the psalm, it says, your statues stand firm. It's referring there to the Ten Commandments. Psalms 119 talks about the statues of God repeated, uh, repeatedly and refers to them in different ways. Here, the psalm, we don't know who wrote this psalm. It says, your statues are firm. And if you look at it, the, the Ten Commandments are a simple foundation describing the character of God. And we sometimes say the character of God is, God is what? One word. God is. The Ten Commandments are an expansion of that one statement. It shows us what it means to love God with everything you have and love your neighbor as yourself. And it says here, declaration that your statues they stand firm and your holiness adorns the house God is holy and mighty no matter what kind of storm you end up in no matter what kind of a bind you're in or how exhausted you are 
Your God is holy and mighty. Turn to Psalms 100. Just a page, another short one. This, we understand, uh, may be a Psalm of David. But here, there is no declaration of might. It's very different. It's short, but it's no declaration of might. It is simple, it is direct. It simply says, praise God. If you know that your God is mighty, that he is strong, that he is everlasting, you know that he reigns, no matter what happens, you can then praise God. You can shout for joy. You can be glad, you can be happy, you can be excited, no matter what is going on, because your God is mighty, holy, everlasting, the creator of the universe, and he is your friend. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you see what I'm trying to do with these two psalms and scriptures? The one declares God is great and mighty and holy. This one says, okay, so now worship him, praise him. Praise him with joy, with laughter. And you know, we so often come to church and we're absolutely silent. I'm glad we have kids here because otherwise it will be very quiet in here. Can you say, praise God? Praise God. Ah, a little bit louder. Praise God. praise God. You know, it's safe. It's okay to, to respond and just praise God and be happy and be joyous and say, my God is awesome. Have you met him? Do you know what he does? Do you know the Lord? Psalm 100 says, shout for joy to the Lord. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joy. Joy, joy, gladness. And it says, know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his people. You know that? If you ever need confidence in life, especially when things go wrong, when health is challenged, when finances are scarce, when relationships are broken, when life hands you lemons, you need to go back to your roots and say, I know my God is majesty and honor everlasting. He is a great God. He's Lord of the universe. And then you can say, because of that, I'm going to praise God. I'm going to rejoice. I'm going to be glad because my God is my friend. Because we know God, because we know that we are his people, we enter his gates with thanksgiving, with praises, because our Lord is good and his love endures forever. When we came to Altavaf, we were absolutely exhausted. I was absolutely exhausted. I planned on a five-day hike, a five-hour hike per day. I planned to be up in the mountains for eight days, from Sunday through Monday, eight days. And I was going to hike four or five hours, maybe six hours max in one day. Yeah, I was carrying a heavy pack, but that's okay. I can do that for four or five hours. I have my walking sticks. I know how to use them, and that takes 20% of the weight off my feet. I'm okay. But 12 hours hiking... I'm done. Rain and storm. And ahead of us were a number of rivers that would have to wade up to close to our waist. Ice cold. We'd already done one of them. And it's cold. And they, because of the rain, they were really rising high water. I was not fancying that very much. And there were no rides. No way out. And that night we had prayed, God, please stop the storm. And he didn't. But we survived the storm. I have a story to tell. <laughs> I can share my questions, my doubts, and my prayers. And God didn't answer them, but God answered by providing for us. And that next morning, when we got up, before I had breakfast, first thing I did after washing up, I went to talk to people. 
I went to the cab, into the ranger. I didn't find the ranger, but I found someone else. I said, hey, do you know anyone heading into town? Any rides? And one guy looked at me and said, well, I might. So he went and talked to someone and said, how much should I charge them for the ride? He came back and gave us a figure, and we had to pay quite a bit for it. But he said, yeah, I can take you. Then he came back shortly later and said, well, I can only take one because my truck is full of stuff. So I said, okay. But he said, I can come back at 4 o'clock, pick you up then. I said, we'll take it. And then short time after that, I was walking around there. He says, hey, wait a minute. I can take you now if you're ready. So I said, we'll be there. And I ran down to Lonnie, and we started packing up like furious because we thought we'd be there at 4 o'clock. And we packed everything up. We took stuff from the other two hikers with us, from uh, Joey and Gartney. And we went there up to the cabin, to the driver with our backpacks and our tent and everything. And we left a lot of things there for other hikers. Said, here, you can take this food. We're not taking it with us. <laughs> we got a ride out of there. I see a picture here. Yeah, let's, let's just leave that one there. We got a ride out of there. And I don't have a lot of pictures from there, but it was one of those super trucks. And we would never have gotten through the rivers in a small, tiny car or in a small SUV. This guy had about 38 or 44 inch tires under his truck, locked differentials, and he was able to drive through the rivers. And I sat in the back a little bit cramped, but I could stretch my legs a little bit. Lonnie was up front and the driver with his grace and mercy to us, he stopped frequently. He said, hey, do you, do you have time to stop? I said, yeah, we have time. We've got all day. <laughs> we have no agenda. And so he drove off the road here and there, off the beaten path to show us, show Lonnie, different things that are not common for people to see. We made it to the town called Hetla, and he dropped us off there. That's where he lived. And we were now back in public civilization and we looked at the buses and we were there on 11 11 30 12 around close to noon the bus would be there at 4 30 so we're checking the buses finally the bus comes and we talked to him and said no we can't take any i said it says here a schedule so yeah that's a schedule but we're not allowed to take passengers we can only take passengers that had booked ahead of time and you have to book and we can't take you until tomorrow night so i i talked to i waited around until another bus came from the same company and there was guy had more authority and I started talking to him in Icelandic because he was Icelandic and I said what are you going to do just leave us here behind so he finally said jump on board we're not going to leave you behind and so we had a ride into town and my dad picked us up then from from uh, a drop off in Reykjavik so we made it and you can see that they were happy there downtown uh, ready to race again run I'm not sure who won that race, but I think they were kind of teasing each other on that. Let's go some other pictures. But we went back to the volcano. We had a great time in Reykjavik. Um, Lonnie and Randy had a chance to go to uh, the Golden Circle, see uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, hot springs geyser blowing up, the, uh, the original ones there. And then we went back up to the mountain, to the uh, volcano. See the crowd walking there? It's crazy. Up to 7,000 people hiking up there in a day. Let's go on. This is the volcano erupted last year. And if you look carefully, you can see just left side of that top, there's some gray smoke. That's the new volcano. Let's move on. And we went in the evening when the sun was setting. Let's move on. And you can see how people are sitting in the slope. And it has changed from the previous one in one week. There was a crate building up, but fortunately, the side of the, of the crater that was facing us fell down. And so we could see inside. Let's move on. That's the next one. And you see the glow from the volcano. And the first time we were there, uh, the southern wind was gentle, and we could feel the heat. It was so warm, so hot right there on the mountainside. This time it was cold. It was northern wind blowing. That's the next one. Next one. The moon was coming in the back, and it was just incredible to watch and to see. Let's move next one. Let's go to the next one. 
it was quite a journey. It was experience. It was not what, what I intended. And there were times that we were exhausted and we questioned, why does this go this way? Why didn't things happen? Why didn't we have good weather? This is the coldest summer on measure that we have on records in Iceland over 100 years. This is the coldest summer. And we happened to be hiking in that time. And uh, the one thing that I can share, and I want to share with you today based on Psalms 93, my God and your God still reigns. Yes. My God and your God is mighty. He is holy. And he reigns from eternity to eternity. And what we need to do in our lives, no matter what happens, your prayers may not be answered as you want. We did not get the dry weather. We, the storm did not abate. It kept on during the night. But we got a ride out. We got other experiences. We shared other things. And God is still in charge. Every one of us, as we exited the, the hike at different times, we made it. Even Bjarni and Joey, when they came to Thorsmur, they were told there's no bus for you. You got to go online and order to get a bus next day. They had planned to hike over a small walking bridge over the river. That had been blown down. It was broken. They could not cross the river. And yet God provided for a driver. And what's interesting is both drivers that we had, their names were the same, Einar. One was about 60, the other was about 30 years of age. Not the same person. But God provides. And so my question to you, my question for you, have you committed your life absolutely, totally to the God that reigns? The God that is mighty, the God that is holy, the God that knows the future, the God that answers prayers as is best in our lives. It doesn't always go well. It doesn't always go as we plan or as we want. Life happens. But my God reigns. My God is alive. And he helped us out of that struggle. We thought we would hike for five hours and maybe four hours after that. Instead, we had 12 hours and we were exhausted. But you know what? We were dry. We were warm. Even as we hiked, exhausted, but we made it to the end. And we got out of there all the way to Reykjavik on that day. And you're God. No matter how exhausted you are, no matter how troubled you are, no matter how much pain is in your life, your God will carry you through to the very end. And every day of your life, you can say, I praise my God because he is an awesome God. Are you willing to commit your life absolutely to this God that is mighty and holy? Are you willing to give everything that is yours, your future, your present, into his hands and say, God, I trust you. And are you willing to glorify and praise his name and shout for his glory because you're excited, you're happy to know that your God is alive and well and mighty. Let's pray. Lord God, I thank you for watching over me and my fellow hikers as we hiked in the mountains in Iceland. You got us through and all the way home. And I know in the same way that you will watch over each one of us as we journey through life. We go through the ups and downs and disappointments and some things work out well, some things we question. And yet we know in our hearts, we know in our minds with certainty that you reign, that you are a mighty, a holy God that reigns in grandeur. And so, Lord, we ask that we might always remember to praise you, to glorify you, to be happy, be excited that we serve you, that we belong to your kingdom. May that be our reality every single day. I ask in Jesus' name.
Please stand with us. We're going to sing about the wonder of God, his creation, and most of all, his love. He reigns. God, you truly are an amazing, majestic, holy, a mighty God. And I ask that each one of us, that we might praise you, glorify you, and be confident as your children for time and eternity. We ask in Jesus' name. 